Perfect. All righty. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I know people are still trickling in. Um, if you want to join the board, it's pinned at the top of the chat there. Um, and welcome to Moving Minds, Exploring Conversation Maps Miro. We have uh, Joshua Davies here. He is a conversation architect at Nomium. Um, and if you have any questions for Joshua throughout the session, feel free to just drop them in the chat. I'll be collecting those uh, throughout the call. So, you know, if we want to do some Q&A at the end, we'll have them ready to go. Um, and I think that's it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop off and let you get started, Joshua. Awesome. Thank you for the warm welcome, Marissa. And yes, you pronounced Nomium correctly. I, I saw the moment of trepidation that, oh, is it Nomium? Yes, it's it's, it's like always, it's an imaginary word. So we're going to go with it anyways. So anyways, <laughs> many, many, many thanks. And, and thanks everybody who has dialed on in. Yeah, so just to, just to uh, tap off what, uh, what Marissa has also said, um, I know that this is, it's 45 minutes. So it's a very, very, very brief webinar, but I'm a big believer in, active participation. So definitely do feel free to be a participant rather than a passenger. Feel free to put any messages you want in the chat to join at the board. Um, as Marissa mentioned, the board is going to be pinned at the top the entire time. If you go to the board right now, it looks very boring because I've hidden everything. But I promise it's going to get very visible in a moment. And there's going to be a lot of stuff for us to do on there. It's not just going to be a vast gray uh, atmosphere. Because uh, if, you, if you look at the board now, that's not very exciting, but it will be in just a moment. So yeah, world's briefest background. My name is Joshua Joshua. I'm actually originally from Hawaii, from the US, but outside the States now for a good 21 years, currently based in Hong Kong. So it's past 1 a.m. here. So as a facilitator, if you do see my attention ever slightly drift, it's not because I don't love being here with you, but at 1 a.m., I am ever so slightly on the sleepy side. I'm very under caffeinated at the moment. So it may Every once in a while, take a little while to gather my thoughts. Uh, been doing this for quite some time. Last year, did this in 35 plus countries virtually, 2019, 25 plus face to face, mostly for Fortune 100s, all that kind of stuff around the world. Although we do a lot of nonprofit and NGO stuff as well. And this is actually my third time getting to talk and hang out with all of you at Distributed. So it's really, really a pleasure to be here. But that's enough about me. I'd really like to know. Thank you, Teresa. That's very kind that you wouldn't know that I'm sleepy. Normally, I would actually uh, slightly caffeinate myself for this, but I have another session starting face-to-face -to -face tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m., so I don't want to risk it. So, yeah, fantastic. Uh, yes, very, very good. Thank you, Marissa, for making the note in the chat. If you want to see me larger because my slides are behind me, you can click on my video and pin me. You can pin me so I am larger there. So without further ado, I'm kind of curious how all of you would actually define influence. And just to make that a bit more fun, um, I would invite you all to click on that lovely, beautiful link that is at the top of the board there. I see that we've got 35 people on there now, and I would love you actually to, to grab a square and uh, just to get to get to defining influence in, in however you would like to define it. And we'll just give you, give you a minute to do that, not too, too long. And I can see we're going quite wild there. We have 72 people in the room and I have, I believe I've got 76 squares. Did I do my math right? So yeah, we're, we're pretty close. If you need an extra sticky note, feel free to toss one on there. But I am kind of curious what we got here. All right, let's see what we're getting here. And if I was being really fancy, we could also vote on which definition we wanted. But I actually just want to get a an ad hoc survey of some of our definitions. So influencing others. Changing minds, impacting direction, I'm liking this. Storytelling to influence, love that. Guiding factors to motivate or sway someone's actions, positive or negative. Strong point of view, new ideas, persuasive, movement, inspire. And you know what? It's gotta be true because it's got an exclamation point. Fantastic change, all that kind of fun stuff. A lot of really good definitions. Um, and I'm very happy that these are largely positive definitions that we're capturing here on the board. The reason why I say it is when I do this session a lot of times uh, with, with clients, um, th there's always at least one or two people who have that mild temptation to go into the manipulation side of influence. But they're like, yes, we're going to learn to trick people. And I need to be super, super clear. When we're talking about mapping conversations and mapping influential dialogues using Miro, we're very much talking about positive influence. Uh, not just because it's ethical and a good idea, but also honestly because the research doesn't tend to support this idea of manipulative influence. 
it might work in a very brief moment, but in the long run, most um, conversations and most business relationships are just that. They're relationships. They're extended over time, and it's just not a good practice. So we got a lot of positive, good definitions going on here about inspiring change, all that kind of stuff. And that kind of aligns really with kind of the Cambridge definition on this, to cause someone to change a behavior, belief, opinion, et cetera. And I think that's a great definition. But I also think it's, to some extent, missing half the ingredients of the recipe. So if we look at influence, on the one side, we've got the things that we're bringing to the table, our message, the things that we would like people to embrace, to change, et cetera. But on the other side, I think it comes down to a lot of what Paul Watzlawick he was a very famous organizational behavior psychologist. And he said, the belief that one's own view of reality is the only reality is the most dangerous of all delusions. And what he means by this is this idea that it's just our view that matters. It's just not quite enough. So when we're talking about the recipe for good influence, it's a mixture of exactly what we've all shared here on the Miro board. But the other half of that is really about what's going on in the other person's head, the ingredients they've got, and how we could bring those to the surface. So today, actually, on the Miro boards, we're going to be exploring this over about the next 35, 40 minutes. So hopefully I can get you interested in some of the techniques for positive influence using Miro boards, help you actually map, explore, and remix those conversations, and get you uh, a little bit curious to, to check out some of the follow-up resources. So without further ado, I'm actually kind of curious Based on this definition of influence, this positive one, where it's us trying to move people's minds, you know, to change the direction of things, but also making sure that we're pulling ingredients from wherever they're going, how good are you at doing that? So on a scale of one to 10, if you could just type in the chat really, really quick, and that's the chat in Hopin. This is one of the few things not on the Miro board. Where are we at? 10, absolute master at influence, didn't even need this, just wanted to hang out with me at, you know, 1 a.m. Hong Kong time and keep me awake, which I do appreciate. One, total disaster, uh, you know, not even sure what we're doing here. Somewhere between one and 10. Partial numbers are fine, 6.25, 8.33. Look at that. We've got a full wide spectrum going on there. We've got from six, seven, eight. What's the highest number going on there? Who's the most optimistic? All the way down to fours. So it looks like we got a four to eight. Oh, David Diaz, an eight that is on fire. Thank you. I like the emphasis there. You've literally lit it on fire. Yeah. And so when we're talking about this influence, this idea here, obviously there's this blend of culture, context, and character individual variation, situational variation. Yeah, depending on the topic, Quanta, excellent answer, and cultural variation. The only point that I wanna make when we're starting to talk about influence and mapping it in Miro is a lot of times there's a temptation to go too, too deep into the culture side. And I do recommend, if you wanna dive deep into culture, uh, Aaron Meyer, Culture Map, great book on this. But the one little note I wanna pin on that is it's not as simple as like an east-west divide because way too often people try to oversimplify influence looking at it. And I just wanna make an example. And this is from Erin Meyer's Harvard Business Review article from 2017. And she's got two you know, axes here, avoids confrontation, emotionally unexpressive. Hey, Natalie, great to have you in, this, in the show as well. We got UK and Sweden down here, but we've also got Korea and Japan. And the only point I'm trying to make with that is that when we're looking at the culture, context, character, all that kind of stuff that impacts how we influence others, we don't want to make over assumptions about culture and start stereotyping around it. So today, a lot of what we're going to be exploring is that individual variation and contextual variation. So that's a mouthful. That's the TED Talk. The TED Talk is done. What I'd like to do actually is start looking about why we're using Miro for this and then actually getting a couple of volunteers to start doing this. So before I ask for two volunteers, I just wanna plant a thought in your head and give you a little bit of time to think about that thought so that you're feeling ready if you do raise your hand in just a moment. So for those of you who are interested in volunteering, what I'd like you to be thinking of is imagine for the 2023 distributed, so not 2022, next year, but 2023 distributed, we're going to do an unusual location for the offsite. We're going to do it all face to face. We're not going to be dialing in virtually. We're all, all of us who love Miro are going to all meet together somewhere. And what I'd like you to do is to think now, think now in your head, what is your really interesting, unusual destination that you're totally convinced everyone should buy into to have the next Miro offsite? We're going to come back to this slide in just a moment and we're going to start playing with it but I just wanna plant that seed with you now because we're gonna loop back to it in a second. So before we get to that, why Miro? Quick question, I'll ask this in the chat. The secret to why we're using Miro 
for doing this is this. Now, my question to you, which I'd love a, a yes, no, or maybe in the chat is, would you be willing to live here? This right here, that's the interior. This is the exterior. This is actually the reversible destiny lofts. And this is actually an apartment complex in Japan. So interior, exterior, yes, no, maybe. Would you be willing to live here? Yes, no, maybe. I'm kind of, abso thank you, Sansia. No, absolutely not. I love the effusive no. No, maybe if it was free. Oh, that, that was such an effusive no. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Uh, so I, I should make a note for those of you saying yes, where you're a grill. Yes, but not with my kids. Thank you, Lillian. I like that idea there. It is, it is a fun one. So this was actually designed very, very specifically, this reversible destiny law. It's actually designed to be a retirement community. So this was designed because they've done a lot of really interesting research where if people are, are living in a more boring traditional retirement community, not bad, but you know, a bit more traditional, cognitively, we tend to age a little bit faster because the environment's very predictable. This environment was designed to be very unpredictable so that it actually essentially reverses, not literally reverses the aging process, but slows it down because it's constantly surprising us. Can't imagine my parents there. Anuka, I, I'm with you. My parents are, are, are New Englanders through and through. Uh, they may find that a, an interesting environment to be in. They're, in. they're in Newport, Rhode Island. This might be a bit of a stretch from there. But the reason why I say this is I would agree with the quote, uh, it's a Churchill quote, that we shape our buildings and thereafter they shape us. We shape our environments and that has an impact on the type of ways we live there, the type of conversations we can have. And the same is true with our mural boards. So one of the best ways for us to actually visualize conversations, to actually see and play with them is through um, using a mirror board. So with that, and before I actually uh, show you how we're using the mirror board, I'd actually like two volunteers if I might. Two volunteers. Volunteers, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taken off mute. Yay, you'll be joining us. And what you'll be doing is you're going to be having a, a short little debate, short little debate about what's going to be the best location for an unusual offsite. Nabila, so we've got Nabila, awesome. So that's one person. So Marissa will we'll unmute Nabila. And we need at least one more. We have up to three maximum. Renee, so we've got Nabila and Renee are going to have a debate. All right. All right, it's gonna be Nabila and Renee, fantastic. Could we unmute please, Marissa, Nabila and Renee? And we'll just double check to make sure the audio is working. We got Nabila and Renee, and if one of them, uh, so Chris, thanks for raising your hand. If Nabila or Renee's audio is not working, we're gonna pull you up on stage as our awesome backup. Yes, apologies. I'm just trying to figure out how to unmute them because I thought I knew. No worries whatsoever. So one moment as we technically will unmute you. <laughs> Let's... They have to ask to share audio and video. Yes. Top of the screen. There gotcha. We go. Okay, I see Suspense the request. Suspense is very dramatic. You see the request? Okay, fantastic. Okay. I think... Yes, I can, Nabila. No worries. Renee, I'll explain I the debate. You, I believe. Ren Renee, can you uh, say something? This is Renee. Can you hear me? Hey, yes, we got you, Renee. One down, one to go. And yes, Nabila, I'll explain again. Renee, hello. And Nabila, yes, if you can request to share your audio, I can add you as well. Good to see you, Renee. All right, we've got one more. Just waiting on the request from Nabila. Or Nabila, if you're not able to find the request button, Chris, if you want to try it as well, top right of the presenter window, whoever gets to it first, we'd, we'd love to have either one of you up here with us so we can actually, we can begin this conversation. Okay, Nabila, I saw your request come through and I just added Fantastic. you. Fantastic. So hopefully you're showing up soon. There you are. Hey, welcome Nabila. Fantastic. So yes, let me briefly explain. Let me briefly explain what we're about to do. So thank you so much for volunteering. What Nabila and Renee are going to be doing, and this is how to put it, this is potentially a friendlier discussion than the ones we do with some of our, our client negotiation and sales discussions, but we're gonna be having a nice friendly version of it. And what Nabila and uh, Renee, what you're doing is you're having a discussion. You're coming to a very important meeting at the Miro headquarters 
to propose your solutions and debate what's going to be the next offsite location for Miro. So I would like to have the offsite uh, Miro distributed in Antarctica, or I would like to have it, you know, in the space station, wherever it might be. But you have to try to persuade the other person. So it's a back and forth dialogue. It's not a presentation. It's a back and forth dialogue. And we're going to be trying to persuade the other person. Now, everybody else who's sitting here in the meeting, you've actually got something to do as well. And let me explain what that is. If you click on that wonderful, wonderful link that's up there, you're going to see um, that I've got this nice board here. Let me make myself transparent. So Renee and Ren Nabila, you can be thinking about your argumentation, your influence persuasion while I explain this to everybody else. Uh, I've got here, let me just shrink myself down slightly, make it a little easier to see. Semi-transparent, Jedi style. There we are. So what we've got here is we've got something called the conversation map. Now, regardless of con uh, context, culture, and character, underneath every conversation is this map. Now, how you move around the map is definitely going to differ depending on culture, context, and character, but the map itself is the same. You can either be in this yellow corner, yoink, right there, where you're storytelling and persuading, essentially trying to push your message out there. And what, thank you very much, Annalisa. Or you can be over here in the red zone, which oftentimes you put your message out there. Renee like says something to Nabila, and Nabila goes, I understand you but, and so pushes back, goes to that red zone. So the question is, how do we get out of that red zone? And way too often what happens in the conversation is people just go back to the yellow zone. Oh no, I understand you, but, and they just try to persuade again. Where we really wanna be trying to go to get unstuck. So we don't get in this perpetual loop of, I understand you, but, that's a nice idea, but, statement, statement, position, position, parallel monologues with no real dialogue. We're trying to get up to this blue zone of understanding, validating, and then after Nabila and Renee feel understood. And I need to be clear, there's a big difference between me saying, Renee, I understand you. And Renee is going, <laughs> no, you don't. And Renee actually feeling understood because then Renee might be willing to listen to what I've got to share or to engage me in mutual problem solving where it's a bit of my ingredients and a bit of her ingredients. So I've got over here an example with Nathan and Robert that I'll show you in a little bit, but we're actually gonna replace the Nathan and Robert. I would like you, instead of having Nathan and Robert, blue, uh, Renee, since you dialed in first, but are you okay with being the color blue, Renee? You are blue. Nabila, are you okay being the color uh, reddish pink? Is that all right? So that's gonna, that color is gonna represent you. You don't need to worry about those. Everybody else in the dialogue, Everybody else who's watching this, the uh, the 103 people we have, no pressure, Renee and Nabila, the 103 people who are watching this debate, what I'd like you to do is as you see the conversation happening, when you see Renee do something, she's blue again, Renee is blue, Nabila, pink in this, move the sticky note into what they're doing. So if you see uh, Renee telling a story, just move it on over here. And if you see her you know, doing something else, take another sticky note, move it to there. So you're moving the sticky notes to where the person is. You're moving the sticky notes to where the person is as the dialogue is going on. And in the background, I'm also going to be doing uh, some live transcription. All right, does that make sense what I'm doing? So everybody in the audience, I hope it makes sense. Again, blue, Renee, I, you know, I really should have done red, Renee. That would have been super easy. Uh, why did I not think of that? Anyways, it's fine. We're not switching it. Renee, you're blue. It's it's 1.30 a.m. here in Hong Kong. Uh, <laughs> Renee, you're blue. Nabila, you're pink. People, please do move the stickies as they have the conversation. I'm also, thank you so much, Ad 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 Viva. That's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna also turn on the transcription in the background so we can map out the dialogue in another way in just a moment. Are there any questions before we begin, Renee and Nabila? You're coming into a meeting. It's a really important debate. Feel free to interrupt each other, push back, anything you'd like. Renee and Nabila, are we ready time? to begin? Yes. Uh, so I will, I, will I will probably cut you off in about five minutes. I'll probably cut you okay. off prematurely. Don't worry if you don't get to the end of the conversation. It's no stress. And without further ado, Renee, Nabila, a big clap. You may both come off mute and uh, let's begin. With you, Renee. Well, sure. Yes. I'd like to suggest the location of Wayside Waves Animal Shelter in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I recently actually ran a, co a conference here and it was a beautiful facility. Um, imagine 
looking around and seeing picturesque views of the mountains and the plains and just having trees surround you um, as you're sitting there in a conference. On top of that, there are also um, three huge screens. It is set up for any kind of digital sharing, which would be perfect for collaborating on Miro. Um, it's accessible. Anyone can sit in a different place in that room and be able to see the screen and really feel immersed in, in Miro and whatever activities we want to do there. Nabila, I don't know if um, your location has those features, but I'm interested in hearing them. Nabila, you are muted. You are muted. Nabila? I, I, we may have lost our other volunteer. <laughs> no worries. Oh, there, there, there she is. Oh, you're, you're still muted, Nabila. I'm so sorry. Can we, un can we, we have to unmute you. Nabil has I'll some really good perspectives. Yes. Well, let Nabil no jump worries. in when, when Nabil is back. All right. In the meantime, let me tell you more about this space because it's fabulous. Um, so another way that it's accessible that I really liked is that there are all gender restrooms, single occupancy. They're fully private, um, which I like to have for folks so that everybody feels comfortable getting what they need. There's also a huge full-size kitchen there. So you have everything you need to be able to host. Um, and then one thing that's further is that motivation and inspiration. Uh, what better to be able to have a beautiful functional space, but that is connected ah. to a nonprofit? It's probably on the iPad. It's probably the iPad issue. No worries, Nabila. Uh, th that's that's possible. Now, I know it works in Zoom, but apologies and hop in. I don't know if the iPad audio works. It might be that, Nabila. So actually, can I uh, quickly, because we, we, we are making sure that this is a dialogue, not a monologue. Marissa, would you mind debating Renee since you are already up on stage? What do you think about Renee's idea? Push back as hard as possible, Marissa. I know you've got some ideas. You don't want to go to an animal shelter. You don't even like kittens. You are anti anti animals. We're, let's yeah. let's push back, Nabila. I'm so sorry to cut you off. We we love having you up on stage. I'm so sorry it doesn't work with the iPad. I I we we learned something new today, Marissa. Please push back. Okay. Um. Yes. I hate animals. Boo. Um. That's a bad bad idea, Renee. <laughs> um. I would rather go to a water park because it's really fun and we can swim and go on rides. Um, my favorite water park is Schlitterbahn, which is here in Texas in a city called New Braunfels. Um, it has lots of very exciting uh, water slides and rides. Um, and I just think it's better than, uh, than animals, you know? Where my mind is going, Marissa, is what does this liability look like? Is that something that we would need to get approved through multiple processes and have people sign waivers and things like that? Um, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, that's, that's a very that? great, that's a great call out. Um, and I think that we would need to get some, some waivers signed. And I don't think that would be a problem because everybody loves, loves a water slide. I feel like that's a little bit of a generalization, which is funny because in my mind, I'm like, everybody likes animals and then you don't. So thank you for sharing that <laughs> and for um, checking my own assumptions too, uh, making me think too of folks who might have allergies to animals. So that can be something that we explore a little more about the Wayside Waves facility. Um, but again, thinking about that comfort and accessibility, how about folks who aren't comfortable wearing swimwear in front of colleagues and and networking with that kind of an element um what other like how can we make that a comfortable environment for everyone yep that's a great great call out i totally understand um we'll provide a full scuba suits for anybody that's uncomfortable in a bathing suit um, <laughs> and uh, they can wear those to the conference and it's gonna great yeah um the sticky notes will get oh. wet good point bobby <laughs> 
That was that was that was absolutely beautiful. So we're going to stop the conversation there. I mean, we could we could go on forever in this uh, slightly nonsensical dialogue. That is, we were going for a real dialogue because I know Nabil has got Nabil. If you could actually just type in the chat, what was your idea of the place? Because honestly, we're just all so curious, and I'm so sorry we weren't able to hear you up on the main stage. Uh, but we are genuinely, genuinely curious. And with that, actually, can we give Renee and Marissa a huge, 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 huge clap? Uh, th thank you very much. And Renee, we can have you gently step down off the stage. And what we're going to do now is we're going to unpack this dialogue. And I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques that we can use to do that. So this is, again, going back to our beautiful Miro board. And Nabila, if you've got a chance, do type in the chat where you wanted to go, because we are really, really curious. Um, at least I am. You can see that what we were already doing on here is we were mapping where the conversation was going at different points. Now, what's kind of interesting about these kind of conversations is with mirror boards, you can actually embed things in them. I'm sure many of you are aware of that. Uh, but if not, one of the things that I actually like to do if I'm doing this, for example, in a Zoom or some other session, is we can actually not just have people mapping it out like this with the sticky notes, we can have them actually be mapping it out with the real conversation. So for example, if I've got an Otter going on, and let me just, uh, so Otter is a transcription software. And if I am on my Otter, and it is actually recording what I'm doing. So there we are. You can see it's actually recording what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And it is going through that. Going to challenge Renee with the goals. Going and propose either Dubai or London. Ooh, good choice, Nabila. Especially London when it's warmer. And you can see what I'm saying. That's all appearing there. Now, why am I showing you that? Because if I actually share this, let me just click the share thing here. Da, 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 da. And I'm going to copy that lovely link there. I'm going to go to an iframe generator. Any old iframe generator will do. I'm going to copy that little sharing link. And I'm going to generate myself a lovely iframe. There we are. Copy that. And what I would do here is on this main board, I would actually go on here. I'd be in facilitator uh, view, of course, because I need to have that. I would go on in here into my embed iframe code put my nice little iframe code on in there. This is behind the scenes. You don't need to see this, but we're, we're going to show you anyways. And I'm going to do a nice little embed. Look at that little beautiful embed that's popping up there. And then let me lock that so it doesn't go wandering off into the, the forest. There we are. And go back to our participant view. Da -da -da -da. Yes, I'm loving this stuff. On, on I, I love animals as well. I'm very biased. So what we've got going on here and it's gonna pop up in just one second da, 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 as it gets all started up, is you can actually see my live dialogue going forward there. So if it was a back and forth dialogue between two people, um, I didn't do it in Hopin because in Hopin there doesn't have that transcription integration, but if you're doing this on Zoom, you can do it. And what's nice here is it's not just the dialogue, but I can actually copy and paste that dialogue. And instead of having a sticky note, I could literally take something that was happening in the conversational turn, come on in here for one of these sticky notes or just copy and paste it. And but ba boom, it actually is literally the thing that I just said. So we're mapping out that back and forth dialogue, visually showing where the conversation is going in real time which is something that's really, really interesting for us to unpack. Lots and lots of fun there as our first step towards doing that. So in terms of having an awareness, the first step of getting better at these conversational dialogues is having people have this awareness of where the dialogue's actually going. So that's our first step. The second step is what we do with it next. So let me just go to the next screen here, da, 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 da. hidden for now. Let's unhide this. It doesn't need to be a head. Yeah, it is a really cool clue. It's not the only one. What we're going to look at now is what lies beneath. So let me just kind of pull back for just a moment before we dive on into this. Um, because as I did say, we did do actually some transcription on that wonderful dialogue uh, that was up there <laughs> about animals and pets versus water parks. A lovely, a lovely dialogue. Although I know plenty of golden retrievers that would be okay with merging those two solutions. And what we're going to do now is actually beyond just mapping out where they are on that map, we're going to try to look a bit behind the scenes. Because one of the biggest challenges, as Covey says in conversation, is that most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. That will work in Zoom on the spot. Yes, it will, 100%. And uh, if you've got the Otter, so it's not the only way to do it. There's a bunch of different inner tools that integrate directly with Zoom. I was using Otter. It's the one that I prefer to use. 
I don't work for Otter. You're welcome to use any other tool. Descript and a couple of others also integrate. Any of the live transcription tools will work. And you can actually, as long as they've got a, a separate thing they go to, you can iframe it directly into the Miro board and then have literally people pulling pieces of the conversation onto the board itself, which is super, super fun. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's step back. Why this matters. Most people don't listen to understand, they listen with the intent to reply, meaning just like we said on that map, you see that dialogue going back and forth between red, yellow, red, yellow, and you'll usually see a lot more sticky notes in these two categories and not, not, not that many sticky notes going up in there into that green and blue. Yeah, sometimes it does keep misspelling things. Uh, I had a participant today, Caitlin, in session. Her name was Sharon and it, it kept calling her Sheriff. Sharon decided that sheriff was actually a lot of fun and she was happy being the new sheriff in town. So in that case, it wasn't a bad error, but yeah, it's not a perfect transcription. We're getting better every time, uh, but yeah. So the question is, rather than just getting stuck back in that back and forth loop, how can we catch the ball and go in a different direction? How can we actually explore it and go somewhere else in the conversation? And that's really what we're trying to do. So for example, if Marissa says something to me, what do I do with it? She tosses this ball of thread to me. Do I just drop it on the ground or do I in some way weave it together? Every conversation is truly many possible conversations. As a kid, I used to love these like choose your own adventure books. You get to page 23 and it says, would you like to go up the mountain? Um, you know, turn to page 84. Would you like to go into the dark cavern? Turn to page 86. And so essentially it branches off in many, many paths and everything opens and closes different doors. So the question is, how did we in this conversation choose to open certain doors and close other doors? Not saying one is better than the other, but saying that we definitely were making some choices in terms of how we were shaping that conversation. So let's take a literal look at the conversation. Let me show you behind the scenes what I am doing here, just to show you the behind the scenes stuff. It's gonna get slightly messy, but it's good to see. Uh, you see, I've got my big blank, slate here that I want to do some subtexting on, start analyzing this conversation a bit more. Um, and what I actually want to do for that is I want to take the beautiful meeting notes that I've uploaded. That is the transcript from the live conversation we just had a moment ago, and it should be ready to go. Yep, I've got my speaker one and my speaker two right there. I can now embed it if we wanted to do that. And instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to export it really quick. So we're just going to export this uh, to a text. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Export to text. Da, 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 da. It has nicely downloaded itself. We're just going to open that up, show that in the finder, and we're going to drag that onto the mural board. So super, super easy. It's going to get dragged onto the mural board as a nice little text. And that means we're going to be able to play with it then. So dropping that on there. Ba, 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 ba. Come on, show up really quickly. Don't embarrass me on the spot, Miro. I know you work perfectly well with this. Oh, I. Sorry, I, I meant to do doc. This is the, it does work perfectly well. Export to doc, not to text. Brain freeze, it is again 1.30 a.m. in Hong Kong. So apologies, one more time. Let's try that one more time. Export to document. I do actually know how to do this. La la. Yes, I am aware of that. That's actually why I'm exporting it to, to doc as opposed to text object, Robert. You're absolutely, absolutely right, 100%. So the workaround for that is specifically going to doc or PDF, although I prefer doc for this one, because that way I can avoid that whole issue. But yeah, you are 100% correct, Robert. Uh, and Robert, it's awesome to have you in session because Robert is one of the most awesome and consistent posters on the Miro community forums. So it's really good to have you here. And that is like super, super cool. Thanks for joining us. So then I would just basically uh, pull this on up and we can then of course expand it if I want to the two pages. I can expand this all, fun little Miro features here we got going on. And we got our conversation here. I'm just gonna lock it though, cause I don't wanna go in anywhere. We're doing the very rough version of this today. It's all locked down in here, but, 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 but. Yeah, it's a fun workaround. And so we've got here this back, we've got the actual conversation. And so what we would do in looking at this conversation uh, and this is, again, more of a monologue than a dialogue at the moment. It gets to be dialogue a little bit later on. But in this, in this conversation here, we would want to have people actually map out what's going on behind the scenes. Because if we want to get out of that red box into more of the blue box, there's essentially five techniques we can do. We can look at following up. So questions for greater information and what else? Tell me more. And basically not just focusing on the position someone's got. I want the water park. I want to go to the animal um, shelter. 
But why did they come to that position? What was behind that? Basically, we want to go open and go deep with our conversations and questioning. Second thing we want to do is listen and label, not just understand what people are saying, but what's behind what people are saying. Are they excited or are they, they angry or frustrated by something? A lot of times we stay on the surface level of the conversation and we know something's going on behind, but we're afraid to bring it to the surface. So one of the best ways to actually do that is to tag the subtext quite literally. So I've got it here. If you want to try this on the board now, you're extremely welcome to. Uh, again, the link is at the top. And what I'd actually recommend, there's a couple different ways you can do this, is you can actually use our nice little pen tool over here. Choose a color that maps the feeling that you think's behind it. So for example, um, let's go for joy. I'm going for joy, that pretty much maps there. And I'm gonna find a place in here that, that feels like it, it's representing joy. I'm gonna try and underline that little bit here. If you don't feel like, feel like doing that tool, you're also welcome to go, and we sometimes have people do this by grabbing a bunch of emojis. So literally grab your emoji and uh, copy and paste whichever emoji you think fits to that particular line. Basically, we're not just looking at the text itself, but what's behind the text? What is the emotion or feeling that's behind it? And this is really a great way to have people analyzing a conversation. Uh, and you can see we're beginning to get people having some fun coloring it out. All right. Awesomeness. Yeah, highlighter is better. Yeah, so hi highlighter is better. There is the highlighter option. A uh, highlighter option is the second option down. That that is better option there. The reason why I didn't choose highlighter for this, Ilya, uh, very specifically, is highlighter has only three color options. And for the emotional wheel, uh, we we want to have a few more options in terms of matching the color ones. But you're absolutely right. If I wanted transparency, and if I've got like a hundred people on here, it can get really really messy. But usually when I'm doing this in session, I've usually just got up to like uh, you know twenty or thirty people. Oh, there are. There's more color options. Oh, am I learning something new? Burr, 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 burr. I'm clicking on the highlighter. Where's the more color options for highlighter? Am I am I about to learn? Oh my goodness gracious, that's embarrassing. Yes, there's more color options for highlighter as well. I stand corrected. Thank you, Caitlin and Ilya. Never mind. Y'all should use the highlighter tool. And see, I even learned something new today. I've been underlining things for months. I could have just clicked on that little button and done a highlighter. And look at that. We've already gone over the conversation. I hate animals too. Look at that, how we've emotionally tagged that. <laughs> and that's beautiful. So this is again looking at subtext. Now, the next thing we can do if we want to take this dialogue even uh, a little bit deeper is to look for the different directions we could take it. What are different ways that we can build common ground to acknowledge and agree? Uh, basically, they've done all this research on good versus not so good negotiators, and they found that the best negotiators not only ask more questions around subtext, around uh, you know what's behind the position, the interest back there, but they're also trying to build shared and common ground. Like, hey, we both want this to be a successful event for the community. We both want people to, to, to feel psychologically safe, to have joy in this, whether it's with animals or at the water park, what's underneath it, the shared common ground is this kind of, um, this kind of interest. Uh, can I just make a pause here? Whoever tagged, what does this liability look like and put the money sign? <laughs> a legal and compliance is very happy with you at this moment. So we're looking for that common ground. And we're looking also with how well we can show the other person that we've really heard them. So if I was saying to Marissa, Marissa, if I understand you correctly, you're saying X, Y, Z. Marissa can either say, no, not exactly, Joshua, and give more information, or she can say, yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't mean we've agreed, but what's really, really critical there, you're welcome, Lacey, that was spot on, is as Covey says here, people are not willing to understand until they feel understood. So people are not usually willing to explore and problem solve or to listen to your story until they feel heard. And the key to that is doing this. Now, why is this gentleman wearing this slightly unusual outfit? Please type in the chat if you think you've got an idea what his job might be, what his job might be. What is his job? He's got a job and he's wearing this outfit for his job. Any guess what that job is? Any guess what that job is? SWAT, that's that possible, Lacey, could be SWAT. Any other guess what that job might be? Stuntman, crash test dummy, I am liking all these suggestions. They are a heck of a lot of fun. Motocross, last time I did this, someone said he was a professional chair tester. Uh, he is not a professional chair tester, alas, uh, apologies. Marketing manager, uh, he is actually a product designer. And in particular, he is a product designer for products for the elderly. He's a product designer for products for the elderly. And uh, the reason why I mention that is he's wearing this because what he's wearing is actually called an empathy suit. 
This suit is actually designed to make it harder for him to see, harder for him to hear, heavier and slower to move around. Basically, it's designed to age him 30 years in just five minutes to force him to perspective take, to really understand his audience. Uh, this is crucial. For example, my brother is left-handed. I'm sure we've got a bunch of other left-handers in the ro room. You're all awesome. Left-handers, super awesome, like my brother, but also statistically 1.7 times more likely to be injured in a product accident, not because they're clumsy, my, although I might tell my brother that sometimes, but because product designers are usually right-handed designing for right-handers. So it's really critical that we try to do that perspective taking, not just having it out there, but truly, truly demonstrating it. So what we're actually gonna do now is look at how we can actually demonstrate that or rather how we can not demonstrate that. So my next thing on the board, which I've just opened up is what we call the bad idea brainstorm. And what I'm gonna do is I've got the whole dialogue up here, but I just want to take a single snippet of it. I just want to take a single snippet of it. And so I'm going to actually go on in here and I'm going to look at one little exchange here. And I'm going to look at uh, uh, what speaker one says. So we've got speaker one going on here about, you know, um, single occupancy, all, all this kind of stuff and why it's an awesome place. Uh, but we're actually going to go, ah, I just went too far. Sorry about that. We're actually going to go, we're going to start with Marissa's thing on I hate animals, I want to go to a water park, and how how could we respond even worse to her thing? So she says that, and then we've got the speaker's response here, liability, all that kind of stuff. And what I would like you to do, yes, Serene, I absolutely love the bad idea brainstorm. Bra bad idea brainstorm. I love stretching people's brains in different directions. So I'm going to pull off the, uh, the overall transcript here, and thank you for the nice little kitten. That's adorable. And what we're going to do in the middle is I'm just going to paste uh, a snap snippet of this conversation, make it a little bit bigger. Make it nice and big. Come on. There we are. I hate animals, boo. That's our that's our, our thing, the, the Schlitterbahn. All. Oh, my goodness. I made it a little bit too big. Sorry about that. Again, this is what happens when we are moving very quickly at like uh, almost 1.40 a.m. So what we would do here, and I'm going to do this one along with the other one that goes simultaneously with it, our beautiful bad idea brainstorm. Let me shrink that down slightly, bring it back into the center. Come on, Miro, don't let me down today. Move it on over. Hey, there it is. Nicely locked up in the center there. Boink, you got it there. It, what I'd love you to do is I would like you to think, take a look, zoom on into this and surround it with sticky notes. Now, you could also use the mind mapping tool if you wanted to mind map it off that, but I'd love you to surround it. What would be even worse responses to this comment? So this was the one that Marissa put out here. This is her dialogue quote. The actual response that we got was, and Marissa, what's the liability look like? Is that something we need to get approved through multiple processes? That's what we got, which is, again, going back to that red zone of blocking very, very much. But I'd love to hear what could be worst potential answers here. And I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch surrounding it. Now, while you're doing that, I'm also going to open up the, uh, the next one, which is the opposite. And so for the next one, the opposite one, once we've stretched people into that negative zone of the bad idea brainstorm, we of course wanna talk about how we can remix it in a much more positive way. So what we do for that usually, if we're gonna remix it in the positive way, so feel free, I'm gonna let you bad idea brainstorm for a moment, is I would once again, pull our beautiful, beautiful document up here. And yes, we'll be done in exactly two minutes. I'm super punctual. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And what we would have here is we would ask people to actually use one of these techniques to take just one section of this, one exchange where it goes from speaker one to speaker two, and to try to remix it using the questioning technique, following up, agreeing, acknowledging, listening or labeling, summarize or paraphrasing, or that helping technique. So to take a sticky note and to actually remix something that's gone on in here and try to imagine a different path the conversation could have gone on. So basically, we've gone to the bad idea brainstorm to really, really focus on, oh, my goodness, what we should not do. But then we pivot to what we can do, because ultimately, we really want to invite people to, to truly problem solve. And it's really critical that we give them the space to be able to do that by imagining different possibilities that can happen in the conversation. Right now, in terms of imagining those possibilities, we're still stuck in the what not to say. And oh, my goodness, no surprise. That is a terrible idea. Someone just says they should just yell, Renee, research shows that people who don't like animals are sociopaths. So I hesitate putting a decision in your hand. Deny people sunscreen. I, I'm loving these bad ideas that we got going on here. That is absolutely beautiful. 
So just to close out, what we've looked at here today is just a number of techniques that we can make conversations visible, really make conversations visible so that people can actually organically work with them a bit better as they try to move around that conversation map. Ultimately, we don't want to be like the Choloteca Bridge. This is a bridge in Honduras. It was built to withstand hurricanes. And good news is, yay, it did withstand a hurricane. Congratulations. Unfortunately, the hurricane was so strong, it actually moved the river out from underneath it. And way too often our conversations are like this. These perfectly planned logical arguments that we've got that go on forever, they're great, but they don't really listen to the conversational reality of what's going on around us and we don't adapt and move forward. So ultimately, we really want to build with what we're given and not just get stuck in one place. If you want to know more about this, uh, we do have a place where you can leave some questions there, but also another little embedded pop-up. Uh, yeah, it actually can, Anna. It's really, really interesting. Google the uh, the flow of the like the Mississippi over time. We do have a nice little embedded pop-up here. It does have a copy of the slides I was using in the session. It's also got a copy of some follow-up resources you can try on um, if you want to go deeper, as well as my contact information if you want to reach out and have any other questions. Thank you all again. It's exactly 145 my time. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to stick around if you got questions, but otherwise uh, reach on out on LinkedIn and enjoy the rest of Distributed. There's a lot of good other stuff going on that I'm going to try to stay awake and sneak around to. And thank you again to our amazing volunteers, Nabila and Renee, uh, and apologies about the audio, but it really was great to have you all. So yeah, that's it. Great, thanks so I'm much, punctual. Joshua, this was great. Um, there were a few questions uh, in the Q&A, and so if you've asked a question, just make sure to add it to that board Ooh. so that Joshua can see it. Um, or I think that you can also privately message people within the Hopin platform. So if you want to continue the conversation, uh, you can do so over there as well. There was a question, how often do I map uh, dialogues? Very, very often, because it's what I do for my job. Uh, so very, 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 very often. I, I wouldn't say, it, so it, it, it becomes less labor intensive uh, if you're doing it in a non 45 minute rushed format. And there's a lot of automated ways to do it. Unrelated to cause it, my inner nerd wants to know which webcam emulator. Ah, Robert, I'm using mm-hmm, M-M-H-M-M. -M -M. I'm using that tool so that I can become a Jedi and become invisible and use this behind me. It is literally called M-M-H-M-M -M -M, uh, and it works really well. It plays well with, with Miro. So I use it almost every day, uh, but not XSplit VCam. That's also a good option. I find mm -hmm to be more powerful, but they're both good. Thank you, everybody. Yes, I do map conversations live, Caitlin. Yes, we do, using the, the live methodology. Um, I use uh, my Remarkable tablet, and we're doing like, so actually in the Otter AI, uh, software, there's an option to leave notes. And so I'll be in the background, literally tagging notes as the conversation is going on. So good question, Caitlin. But yes, literally mapping it live. But we're doing it in Miro here to make it more visible to more people. Uh, but if it was just me, I could do it just in a single tool. Cool. Uh, have a wonderful, great. Links in the embed are not working. Oh, that is actually a really good fun thing. It, they should have been before. Let me double check on that. Is it not working? Oh, it, it, if you're on it, definitely on an iPad, it won't be. Is it? So by the way, the way the embeds work a lot of times, is it? Oh, it should be if we do. Ah, if you right click on it and click open link in new tab. Oh, is it not? Oh, it's not working. Let me, I'm going to redo the embed. That is so strange. It should be working. How dare, how dare it not work? That is fascinating. Ah, fascinating. No worries. I will, I will, uh, I can give you the direct link to it in the chat as well. I'll go into my seven taps. I'm doing my, I'm cheating. Da -da 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 -da. I thought I could get all fancy with the embeds and it did used to work, but now my double embedding didn't work. I did uh, last year, I did Miro Inception where I had a Miro board embedded in a Miro board embedded in a Miro board, which is, uh, I don't recommend doing that. It's 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 a lot of fun, but it drives one to, to madness. All right, moving minds, next steps. I'm gonna put the direct, I'm gonna put the direct link in the chat to the, to the, uh, the thing. I'll put that on the board as well, but here's the direct link. That should, that should not have any of those right click issues in the embeds. Good to know though. Yeah, cool. Uh, and Marissa, feel free to kick me off anytime. I know there's another session coming up. I'm just trying to answer any questions that come on up. 
Yep. Thanks so much, Joshua. Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, if you have questions for Joshua, you can, you can leave them on the board. And uh, we'll continue the conversation that way. Thanks so much, everybody. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks, Marissa. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.